motion to call the town board meeting October 18th, 2012 to order. I'll make that motion. Second. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a moment of silence for the uh, military that are serving abroad and in this country. Thank you. <coughs> the emergency exits are in the rear on your left. Councilwoman Reamer. Here. Councilwoman Parodi. Councilman Haas. Here. Councilwoman Doyle. And Supervisor Flood. Here. Uh, public comment? Yes. I bet. Uh, Do I have your name? Uh, ben Schwartz. S C H W A R T Z. Um, so we are having our, um, uh, I'm a, a grower with, along, here, along with Erica Brenner at Wasay Community Farm, Community Farm. Um, located at the uh, Old Luther Auction Barn. Um, and we are having our third annual Harvest Day celebration this Sunday um, from 12 to 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to have workshops, um, a potluck. Um, we're gonna have. We're gonna uh, send a, a bus over to um, Food Day, which is also happening. Um, I think from twelve to four, um, and there'll be kids' activities. Um, and yeah, we're expecting a good crowd. Um, let's see what else there is. Uh, herb sampling, farm tour, uh, veggie oil powered bus, uh, live music and DJ, and fun stuff for kids. Um, so. Uh, we'd ask anyone who wanted to attend to bring a dish. Um, and uh, I have uh, flyers here to drop off the town hall. Is that the food day at Immaculate Conception? Is that what you're Correct, yeah, at food okay. at Immaculate Conception. So we're going we're gonna to head over there at 2.30 um, and be there till 4 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, we're at the farm there um, at the Immaculate, Immaculate Conception Church. So you guys have the flyers outside, so. Is there a charge for that? Hmm? Is there a charge for that for the church? Is there a charge um, for the church? No, they just bring I a dish, I don't right? think so. Yeah, well, there's no charge for ours, and I think the Immaculate Conception is also free. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It was last year. Yeah. Anyway. So, that's pretty much it. Um, so where should I leave flyers? I'll just leave them here. We'll put them up for you. Perfect. Or give them to Patty. Okay. She'll put them in the... That's it? Yeah. Okay. And there's a phone number there. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Tom? No? No? Any other public comment? Uh, highway report? We've been out grading roads. We've got a little bit more to do on Tower Hill, and that's going to be about it for great roads. Uh, we're going to cut. We're, we're going to start cutting some trees. We've got a lot of dead trees out there, so the tree crew is going to be coming in. I talked to DOT today, and they said that we need a permit for the cross uh, crosswalk signs, and that them signs that we put out or you put out, whoever put out, they're not acceptable. You have got to have a sign post the four foot post in the ground and you have to put signs on uh, coming into town warning people that there is crosswalks so this is yeah the, the new the new um, street signs right warning yeah, people yeah. that there is crosswalks yeah and who puts those up the state no we do we do yeah I got the permit coming so once it comes in we'll get together on it but they got, I, th I saw they put one, some, the state put one up here. Did they? I think so, on, on 22, because they're new. Hmm. I think it just has somebody 
like crossing the picture of somebody crossing the water. Right, yeah. right, with an arrow pointing down at the yeah. final one. Yeah. Maybe we can, maybe we can get them to put them up if they put that one up. Yeah, it's there. I saw it the other day. Hmm. He's coming out. It's Chuck Walters I spoke with. He's coming out to meet with Pete Sotero real soon. Yeah, I, I got an email from Pete. They were trying, he was still trying to set up a date with him. Okay. So, and I spoke to uh, Wheeler today. You're meeting oh. tomorrow? Yeah, I don't know anything about Wheeler. I haven't <coughs> heard from him. I called him uh, yesterday. He didn't call me back. I called him this afternoon because I got a couple calls that uh, they said there was a lot of water. Um, yeah, the water's going right around the basins. Right, on That's his driveway? On his driveway? Out of Dingy's driveway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I told him, I said, you got to fix it. You know, you got, so he's supposed to be there tomorrow with the contractor. He said he's going to call you in the morning. Okay. What about the pipe that's not in the easement? They're going to fix it. I told him we got to fix it. Yeah. It's not our problem. You know, the, the, it is what it is. Yeah, we we didn't put it there. Huh? We didn't put no, it there. No, because so. it would be nothing but trouble down the road. So right. it's got to be done, done right. That's what I told him. So he's going to meet with Gleason there tomorrow, tomorrow and they're going to have it fixed. Okay, good. At some point. That's all I have. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to just bring up the soil borings. Yep. We talked about this a while back. Right. Um, we got three bids to do the soil borings for the highway department, and uh, we still have that in the budget to do that. Okay. Because uh, the three three quotes, uh, Dan Lokes from Boston Spa was thirty one sixty three thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, Denti Engineering was $3,640, and soil testing of Oxford, Connecticut was $6,138. And I read through the first one, which is the least expensive, $3,160. They were going to rely on the soil borings from the salt shed area, which is not in the area where we're even thinking about putting the garage. Um, and using that information and supplementing it with uh, pits, <coughs> digging pits. And I just know from taking out that fountain, we took out that fountain right behind the highway garage. Right. So I know that soil is not good and I don't think we can rely on the salt shed area. Um, the middle one, Denti Engineering at 3,640 um, seemed more inclusive in what they were gonna do and uh, they weren't charging extra. The first company was charging a 10% up charge for having any borings that would, if they were gonna do any. And uh, so this is, to me, this seems the most reasonable. I talked to him about doing um, borings inside the building. And he said if we did some borings close to the edge of the building, um, that would give us a good reading and if they're if they look suspicious, then they could go inside. Going inside, they can't get their machinery in there because our ceiling is only 15 feet, two inches high. So they would have to bring in a tripod to do the interior borings. And I don't know if you've been in there, that floor is boggy right in the center. Um, so if they don't get enough information from the outside borings, they would do the inside borings uh, and they would cap it at $700. But they would only do those if, if the first borings look suspicious. So, okay. um, so I would recommend that we go with uh, Denti Engineering of Water Elite um, for thirty six hundred and forty dollars, and um, go with the cap of seven hundred if we need to do it. So the total, if they did everything, would be. Uh, four thousand three hundred and forty dollars. So it's middle of the road. The, the other third bid was six thousand one hundred and thirty-eight. So that would be my recommendation. Was the work comparable between the thirty-six forty and the six thousand? Like what they'd be providing? Yes, um, they're coming from Oxford, Connecticut, and I've used those people, and you know, they're a little higher for the same work, you know, the, the cost per linear foot to um, do the borings. So it may be transportation, I don't know. So I would make that motion that uh, we hire Denti Engineering of Ward of Elite to do the soil borings at the highway garage and 
uh, with an initial cost of $3,640 and a contingency of $700 if we need the extra information. I'll second that motion. Councilwoman Reamer? Yes. Councilwoman Perotti? Councilman Haas? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? And Supervisor Flood? Yes. And, and when can they do it? As soon as we let them know. Yeah, the weather's still good, so. Okay. Okay. So you gonna call? Who's yeah. gonna call? I'll, I'll call. You call because um, you have to do the call before you dig. Okay. You know, so. Yeah, let me know when they're coming. Okay, I will. That's it? Town clerk report? Uh, I just want to say that uh, the town clerk's office is going to be closed on Monday, so I'll see you Tuesday. Okay. Uh, discussions, the uh, town uh, employee handbook were not ready. Uh, Ken Hollow Mining is uh, the people have been following the uh, newspapers and so on and so forth. That's a new gravel mine. It's a, there's an application for a, a, a new mine on uh, South Amini Road, the former, is, it's a Steiner property. <coughs> uh, to bring the town up to date, we have hired an attorney also to represent the town, uh, David Everett from Whitman, Osterman and Hannah LLP from uh, Albany, New York to uh, represent us in this, uh, the initial phase of this application. Uh, he's been working with Ian today, correct? Uh, yesterday. I, I spoke to him yesterday right. and we exchanged emails today. <clears throat> so that's moving forward. The letter will be go out sh shortly and hopefully we can uh, come to some determination with this thing. Uh, that's all we've got for discussions. Anybody uh, discussion here about anything uh -huh. in the mic? No? No, I've, I've asked, uh, you know, people have, well, they saw the article in, in the paper and uh, people have been writing directly to DEC, but I asked them to CC you. Yeah, we're getting tons of them. Okay, great. So well, I just so a file, everybody. So we have a file. Okay. Yeah. Well, At this point, we've hired him to write a letter. Correct. That's yeah. the next step. Write a letter to DEC addressing the application that has been submitted. Well, resolutions, we have a transfer of funds. Number 68. Resolution number 68 of 2012 authorized the town board to transfer funds. Whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary and un unanticipated to amend the budget. And whereas the town budget line 16201.1.00 buildings PS requires an increase in the amount of 3000 for the purposes of personal services for custodian. Whereas the town budget line 1620 Four point one point one three three building CE built cleaning and building requires a decrease in the amount of three thousand. Whereas the town budget line two seven seven zero point one and unclassified revenue requires an increase in the amount of two hundred twenty five hundred dollars received from the Greenway Heritage Conservancy HRV Inc regarding rail to trail and whereas the town budget line eight zero two zero four point one point one zero two planning CE Planning rail trail requires an increase in the amount of 2,500. Whereas the budget line, town budget line 13104.1.40, Director of Finance CE actual support, actual support requires an increase in the amount of $185 for the purpose of accounting services rendered. And whereas the town budget line 19004.1. Point four nine special item CE contingencies requires a decrease in the amount of $185. Whereas the town budget line 1354554.1.129 assessor CE data collector requires an increase in the amount of $76 for the purpose of data collecting. Whereas the town budget line 19004.149 special item CE contingencies requires a decrease in the amount of $76. Whereas the town budget line 97306.1.600 bond anticipation note requires an increase in the amount of $8,000 for principal payment of New York State EFC for old Amenia landfill. And whereas the town budget line 19004.160 
special item CE landfill requires a decrease in the amount of $8,000. Whereas the town budget line 73104.1.12 youth program CE soccer, senior league requires an increase in the amount of $160.90 for the purpose of 2012 and 2011 and 2012 Babe Ruth League fees. And whereas the town line budget 71 104.1 Amenia Park CE requires a decrease in the amount of $160.90. Now there it be resolved that the town board authorizes the transfer of necessary budget lines to proceed the transaction, to process the transaction. Motion made by? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Councilwoman Perotti? <coughs> Absent. Councilwoman Doyle? Absent. Councilman Haas? Yes. Councilwoman Reamer? Yes. And Supervisor Flood? Yes. Uh, committee reports? Oh, I have two of those. I'm sorry. I'm going to want to shout it. <laughs> Hello, Kevin Casson, Media Enhancement Committee. Um, not too much in the Enhancement Committee. We're going to try to give marching orders for everybody to pick out a spot where they want to put a tree so we can get an order in and get something planted this year. So I'm going to be going around with Anna Hadjik. We're going to do a walking tour um, and try to identify some spots, get some orders. Diana King found a very tree, uh, inexpensive um, tree farm. I'm, two-thirds less than any, any nursery I've seen in any of the surrounding five counties. So we're moving forward on that. Um, the main thing is I just wanted to talk about the bulb giveaway. Uh, we gave away over 15,000 plants, bulbs, um, mostly on Saturday. Most before, I think we gave away 12,000 in the first three hours, between 10 and, and 1 on Saturday. Um, uh, gave away a few more thousand. We were out of all the daffodils, tulips, um, everything on Saturday except for the kind of doxa, the little blue flowers. We gave away, I think, about another 5,000 of those on Sunday. So, thinking about maybe just having it one day next year. Um, for people who can't get there, we're thinking of putting it on a website, a place where you could reserve it in case if we're only going to have it one day, not everybody can have that one day off and come and show up. A lot of people reserve smaller amounts letting somebody reserve a large amount can be problematic. Um, now, we gave away 15,000. We purchased about 18,900. The remainder are going to be planted in town spaces. Right out here, in front of town hall, some test barrels in front of curves, and in front of the Route 22 sign, um, the Welcome to Amenia sign on Route 22. Um, and we'll just see how that works. That's going to be the tulips, the daffodils, the kind of doxa, and three different types of lilies that will bloom from early middle to late. So we'll have gardens that will start blooming in May and won't stop till the end of September. So no maintenance, no having to worry about when to cut it back, just, it's just there, forget about it. Um, what else about the tour? That many, um, we'll let you pre-order. And we'll probably, for anybody watching who showed up and wanted tulips, we'll probably get more tulips next year. Um, we had a vote at last year. Everybody who came in took some, got to choose what they wanted, and they went right away, and everybody who came asked for them. <laughs> so we had to tell a lot of people no, um, that we had already uh, given away this, the stock we had. So that's it. I think it was very successful. I can't believe we gave, you know, the 12,000. People were lined up here. The 12,000 went in three hours. It was really pretty amazing. And they're all Sorry. people who were going to plant them along the roadside. Um, I thought I was going to have to sort of convince people of that. And I guess they just, the people who come and get the flowers don't live right on 22 or 44, but if you go on some of the other roads, um, you should see a, a lot of new plantings next year. Okay, thank you. Yep. I still represent the Recreation Commission. I am second chair. I uh, would like to invite everybody to the town board meet, uh, town hall meeting at the school on the 22nd. It 
would be at 7 o'clock. Our other major concerns right now, as everybody is aware of, the budget. And we do not represent anybody or any group that is not on a budgeted line. So some of it, these things are just happening, which we had rather that they didn't. <coughs> but that's the way it goes, at least for the close of this year. And I would be happy to answer any questions of anybody concerning our activities. We're a little slow. This is a slow season. If there aren't any. I, I, I have a question. On, Certainly. On the 22nd, you're talking about Monday? There's a meeting? It, it, it's uh, not a call meeting. It's a rep uh, meeting? We have a guest speaker coming down from Albany. Oh. And he will be conducting. It's uh, going to be a town forum for you for, to question. For answer. what? For town government. Town government? Yes. Oh. That's, it's not. So it has nothing to do with the recreation program? I, yes. Yeah, I was thinking it had to do with recreation. Okay. What well, it does indirectly, but not formally. Okay. Uh, no. She can probably. That's fine. We're all set. I've seen it. We've seen it. It's in the paper. It's yeah. on open government. Yes. Um, okay. The Freedom of Information Law and. Personal uh, um, Uh, privacy laws. Okay. Who, who is the speaker? Robert Freeman, Freeman. executive okay. director of the Committee on Open Government. If there's nothing else, thank you. Thank you. I make. Uh, chairman of the Water Committee. Uh, last night we met and we unanimously voted to uh, refurbish well number one. Uh, and we recommend to the board to approve it. It's a lot cheaper to refurbish it than to close it. And at one time this well was producing 90 gallons per minute. So, um, if it costs approximately 9000 to refurbish it against 15000 to close it. And right now it's still online, but we're, of course we're not using it because it's not producing. And um, so it would come into the rotation once it's refurbished. And we would do this by hydro fracking in the well. And um, they would do it by uh, first uh, pulling the existing equipment from the well, then hydro fracturing the well, and then resetting the, resetting the existing equipment and then sanitizing the well. And they have a price here of, of um, 8900 but uh, there probably will be added um, monies to that. And um, that's about it. And everything so far is running nicely, and we don't have any problems. And um, if you decide to approve it, we would appreciate it if you would do it as soon as possible so we can get started before the frost line sets in. Okay? There was another bid also. Uh, the, there are two bids which I received today. Um, one is from Mid Hudson Pump Company. Okay. From Hopo Junction, which is eighty nine hundred. Yes. The that's second one was from. That's the same company. Yeah, Mid Hudson. The other one is for, I believe, closing the. Uh, yeah, that was closing the. Uh, it would be thirteen. Thirteen thousand nine hundred. <laughs> uh, Boyd Artesian Well. They're just a pump test. 
Yeah. 6,300, roughly. Then we come well, to about 12,000. 12, 12, 12, 13,000. $12,600, actually. Yeah. So, just so I'm clear, Mid Hudson, to refurbish it is 8,900, but the same company to close it is? 13,000. But it's the same company doing the closing? Uh, yes, the I, okay. I, yes. I thought it was a different company. Okay. Of course, they have to do the 72 hour pump test right. on five and six. Right. So that's what. Yeah, I don't know the history of this well. Is it, um, you say it produced 90 gallons a minute? At uh, one time. Right. They've, they've done this before to this well, I think. They've hydrofracked it before? Mm -hmm. They did something. Uh, I think they drilled it. I'm, I'm not familiar with it. I think Marco told me that they've done some, some, something, bef something to this well before. Okay. And, so, and it worked well. It didn't work? It worked well. It worked well. Right. So they anticipate that we would get, right. it would produce again? Right. And how about the quality of the water? Uh, I think it should be good. It yeah. was good before, so... Um, they're going to sanitize it, and we wouldn't use it unless it's <laughs> passed by the Board of Health. Is there money in the budget to do that? It's in, in their water? water. Yes, yeah, there's, water. Money. there's money yeah. in the budget. Yeah, I, I would recommend, I'd make a motion that we do this as soon as possible. The weather is going to turn soon, and uh, yeah. we'll have to wait till next year. So I think we ought to get it online. Get it online. Yeah. Do you make a motion to refurbish? Oh, yeah. Well. Refurbish it yeah. at well eight, number eight, one at one nine hundred dollars. Uh, I'll second it. Yeah. Councilwoman Rima, yes. Councilwoman Perotti, Councilman Haas, yes. Councilwoman Doyle and Supervisor Flood, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody? Any other committee reports? Town board comments. Uh, yes, Mike on it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I missed you. Okay. I think he has a check. You know, it's yeah. Take oh, the, I got the check. That's a copy. <laughs> <laughs> I got the real one. Oh, all right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I've been focusing on the Main Street grant and, and hoping that uh, I can meet with some members of the subcommittee to review the applications we've received on that. Uh, got quite a good interest on it, really. We got seven applications. Um, so at some point, I'd like to, I do have been collating copies of the applications to distribute to everyone on the town board um, and been reviewing them myself. And I also spoke to the Office of Community Renewal about the next steps that we have to. Uh, do for this hundred ninety five thousand dollar grant um, we're half almost at the halfway point really the grant uh, is supposed to be completed by the, the end of next year so I'm really hoping we can get contracts with the landowners by the end of this year at least for some of these projects um, it is just a matter of reviewing the applications being consistent in that review grading them based upon the criteria that we've established um, and then making decisions about how to spend that $160,000 portion of the grant that is earmarked for renovations. Uh, so they're all very good applications, and I think they could definitely help you know, with the downtown revitalization efforts. Um, so I'm hoping to meet really with, I guess, uh, some members of the subcommittee in the next week or so to look at the applications and can you distribute those ahead of time? I mean, I think yes, all yes. the board is involved, so it would be nice to just kind of preview them before the meeting. I have so some. Some are actually incomplete and need a couple, you know, a little bit of follow-up as far as, okay. you know, getting copies of deeds, for example, and things like that. But I definitely have the application, so we can at least start looking at them, because uh, I have been getting the, calls. The, the criteria that we need to use in evaluating it, just so when we read through them ahead of time, it would be kind of nice to know what we're looking for when we evaluate them. Okay, I will do that Something. for you. I'll write up like an executive summary of the, okay. uh, again, summarizing what the priorities were for the grant and how, like a sort of grading system of maybe one to five, like we did um, 
when you hired uh, a planner for the Hamlet plan, sort of grading uh, mm -hmm. the proposals uh, based upon those criteria okay. and just being consistent in that grading. Right. So that's really the message that I got from uh, the Office of Community Renewal. So I'm Can excited. we do that this, this week? Is it possible that we could have these? Yes, you know, I have I mean, most of the applications you know, complete, uh, five of them. I just need to follow up on a couple of them. Uh, one person initially was not interested, but I think she is now interested and uh, actually would be a very helpful, which she uh, wants to do something that could make uh, handicapped accessibility improvements that everyone could benefit from. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, by Monday I'll be able to give a copy of all seven proposals to uh, each member of the town. Why don't you send us out an email on Monday so we can start setting up a date? You okay. Know, actually we have yeah. Okay. Yeah. Out sick. So, you know, like Monday so we can start setting up a date because I'd like to get this thing going. I know. Okay. I'll do that, Bill. It's a good idea to write, <coughs> yeah. just get, throw out some dates maybe that right. could possibly so meet. The, right. So we could have a meeting and get it done, get it moving forward. Oh, good. I know a lot of contractors down there giving quotes. Yeah, so, I've seen some people on the street yeah. looking at the building, so I know. So they're they're all revved up and ready to go. Soon. Some of them. The state seems eager for us to get moving. Well, we have been moving on it. It's yeah. Just I want to yep. make sure we do it right. Um, we have still. Uh, it's, we're about the midway point though, so yep. we really should get contracts. Okay. Um, and then there was uh, some good news on the Wasaic Trail to the train. Uh, from the Department of Transportation. They'd approved uh, all of our claims that combined them into one. Um, and the maximum amount under the Transportation Enhancement Grant for design was 52,000. And uh, they're paying the town 80% of that. So they'll be making a direct deposit by the end of the year uh, for, you know, to reimburse you for the cost that you've already incurred for uh, the design of the Wasaic Trail to the train. And actually, uh, it was good that I, the WSP cells sent copies of the uh, design report to all the key agencies that are providing us other grants. So that should help us get a contract with the dormitory authority and for the $100,000 grant. And I think the $10,000 grant for the Greenway is now complete, or at least they paid the full amount of that grant to the town. Um, so we could actually, once that's closed out, we may even be able to get additional funding from the Greenway. They've always been very positive and behind this project. Plus, I'll look at other grants. I'm applying for the Community Development Block Grant that could hopefully fund the remainder of the $850,000 price tag that we're looking at right now for that. Um, Oh, yes, and you mentioned that you did get the check today for, from NYSERDA, which should close out that, the, enter, the town hall grant. Um, I think it was 39400 something like that, hmm. which was good. And the town also uh, had a local match of 20000 for that project. It was a little bit less than we were awarded, but we didn't do all that uh, we were going to do. But now we can move and look for other potential grant sources from NYSERDA. I know there are some that you're eligible for. So, what about the existing um, facilities? Facilities. That's what we need to go after at this point. Yes, I know. That's a, one of my biggest priorities. Once the community development grant is done, I will apply for that, and I'm still looking into the farmers or the um, kitchen. The kitchen grant. Yeah, I have all the forms for that. Um, so yes, I will follow up on the existing facilities grant. I guess that's it, really. Um, I don't know if you had any other. I have some, for, uh, I'd like you to sign the community development block grant and you have a chance after the meeting. Uh, sure. I got that ready. I'll hand it in. It's due tomorrow. So. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. CJ, you want to Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Victoria went over this at the last meeting, but um, there was, the one announcement I just wanted to make sure got out there in case you haven't taken a look at the hometowner is um, the youth basketball program that's being started and it's going to start running in December. Um, so the last, uh, there will be sign-ups, there are already sign-ups on October 6th, but there will also be sign-ups on October 20th uh, from 9 to 11 a.m. at Beekman Park. Uh, but basically, it's a, a youth basketball league teaching children fundamentals, boys and girls. Uh, they're, they're groupings from grades one through eight. And um, 
I mean, they're hoping to have great, uh, Chip Watt through the uh, uh, Media Recreation Commission. He's one of the people organizing this, and uh, he's hoping for pairings from grades one and two, three and four, five and six, and seven and eight. Uh, and like I said, it's open to boys and girls, and it's really uh, the number of uh, groupings they'll do is dependent on demand. So I just wanted to make sure that got out there for anyone with young children who want to learn basketball fundamentals. Oh, and the cost is $20 per player. Uh, supervisor's report. Um, Darlene has nothing. Oh, no, I haven't said anything yet. Oh, <laughs> the turkey supper at Smithfield Church, just a reminder. When is that? Uh, November 3rd, th uh, three, three servings, and the person to call is Frida Thompson, who's uh, organizing all of that. Her number is 373-8454. And uh, it's always a good event. A lot of people participate, and we look forward to having a full house. I'm in charge of the waiters, so if you have any complaints, let me know. <laughs> That's it. Uh, supervisor's report. Uh, <coughs> BAS is working on the uh, website. Should be done shortly. Uh, the tentative budget uh, we have is uh, the board reviewed it on uh, Tuesday. So we're working on that to finish it. Uh, landfill. I met with uh, Liz Rovers. Uh, at the site and spoke to her also over the phone. They're working on the uh, southern end of the uh, west pond. Um, the, the north part is done. As you, if you come around Delaburn Hill, you'll see where they've graded off most of the, the uh, existing landfill. So they're actually doing pretty well. There's been no uh, additional PCBs in the water. At this point, we've, te we've passed all the testing. The issue they're having now is there's been so much rain that they have to stop and just keep pumping the water to uh, get the water down uh, to a level where they can, they can manage it. Um, for the people that didn't see it, um, the vice president rolled through here the other day with his entourage uh, on, on his way to a fundraiser in Connecticut. I saw it. it was, it's pretty impressive to see what uh, our tax dollars do <laughs> with uh, helicopters and police and um, oh, you missed it. it was it was pretty impressive they had to be at least 20 25 police cars the helicopter um, he went through twice he went through mid mid morning I think right it was about lunch, it was about lunch time yeah so it's a pretty impressive thing to see it <coughs> but they stopped at four brothers but they didn't go in no, they didn't stop. They just kept right on roaring. <laughs> we tried to get them to stop, but they wouldn't. I think they'd have shot us if we stepped out in the street. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. There's uh, issues with that anyway. Um, the only other thing I, I have, and I, I'm not so sure that we could, we have to add the Salisbury Bank to our list. I think that has to be a motion, I believe it, or uh, does that have to be a resolution? Add to our list for so, uh, banks. For banks that you deposit for funds with. Right. Um, I believe that should be by resolution. Right, I think it is. Uh, so I can prepare that for next meeting. Uh, uh, the reason I'm, uh, we have to move some money, they have a better rate on okay. some money market accounts. Um, we can get some uh, better interest on some of our, our money. Because uh, so typically you do it at the beginning of the normally year. Normally at the right? end of the year we add it. It was added, but it was, it was taken off at some point. Salisbury Bank was taken off. And yeah. now they're a New York bank, so we can. We can use but it's them. in addition to what we have. It's in addition to what we have. Eliminating it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, that's all I've got. Um, just the, the BAS website, because that, that came up earlier. When will that be up and running? I'm hoping so the next 60 days or so or less. That long? No. Be nice to. Um, I know Mary's working, they're working with Mary to get everything, all okay. the names, all the email addresses, oh. all the committees, all that stuff is being done now. Okay. So I'd like to get it done before, as soon as possible. Yeah. Okay, because um, I know, you know, we've sent in a lot of photographs. Yep. 
several hundred, you know, all seasons, hoping to get get them plugged in where they're appropriate. But Is, are they going to come in for a training session for town employees so they know how to? Because we're going to be responsible yep. for actually uploading sure, sure. minutes, agendas, whatever we want on the town website. Yep. Yeah. We should probably do that before it's up and running. Mm -hmm. So if they can give you a better idea of how soon we should schedule something in the near future, especially with the holidays coming up. And Bill, do you know, um, can we ask constables to do parking or is not in their scope of work? I don't know. Issue tickets. I tr um, I've not had a chance to call the association of towns. So I'll have to find I looked in our, or I, we have a little uh, legal thing. Yeah. It's not in there, so um, I, will do, I will check with the state. Yeah, it'd be nice to know what our limits are and, you know, adding duties to their work schedule. I don't know. So, so that we can, you know, consider doing that in the future. Some areas where we need it. Okay. I do have a letter from the uh, New York State uh, Department of Environmental Conservation, and I'll just get to the point here. It's a the um, I'll, I'll read it to you. Notice of complete application for mining proposal project Kent Hollow Sand and Gravel DE app DEC application three dash one three two zero dash zero zero one two slash Zero 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 three, dear sir, on September eighteenth, twenty twelve, this office sent you a notice of complete application for the above reference permit application. This letter is to inform you that the deadline for submitting public comments regarding that application is extended until October twenty ninth, twenty twelve. Comments should be submitted to the undersigned DEC contact person no later than the comment deadline. Additionally, the department is planning to make the application documents available for public review at the Amenia Public Library early next week, week of October 8th. Please contact the undersigned to confirm that the documents have been placed and are available. I don't think they're there, right? They're not there yet, because I received one copy. Uh, these documents include mining permit application, organizi organization report, full environmental assessment form, mining and reclamation plan narrative, mining map, reclamation map, and cross section showing the extent of mine, traffic impact study, ecological assessment, sound level impact assessment, stormwater pollution prevention plan, visual impact assessment, and spill prevention plan. If you have any questions regarding this notice and or the application, please contact me at 845-256-3059, James J. Elrid, Division of Environmental Permits, Region 3. Uh, other matters, we have anything else? Well, this is um, this is the Ridgecrest that you just read. No, you're talking about the Kent Hollow. Kent Hollow. Okay. We did receive um, Ridgecrest a notice from Ridgecrest that their app, their um, mining permit is moving forward. Right. And just, I just want people to know that Ridgecrest is different than mm. Kent, Kent Hollow. Hollow. Ridgecrest is in our soil mining overlay. It's totally different. And they received their DEC um, approval to move forward. Right. I think in the next 30 days that'll be coming. That, in the next 30 days that'll be coming from the town, I believe. Yeah. So just to <coughs> let people know that it's a different mine. Uh, <coughs> so. Public comments. Do you have a comment? Anybody? Um, okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have to pay claims. Second. Second motion. Councilwoman Reamer. Yes. Councilwoman Perotti. She's not here, but I'm sure she'd say yes. <laughs> Councilman Haas. Yes. And Supervisor Blood. Yes. 